The University of Texas at Austin is facing a challenge common to many large public universities, how to redesign the introductory large lecture classes that can present the most impersonal of learning experiences. Whereas many of their peer institutions are trying adaptive courseware or flipping the classroom, UT Austin is going a different route with what they call SMOCs, Synchronous Massive Online Courses. The goal is to create a more engaging learning environment for first-year students. So the history of Project 2021 actually started with the first synchronous massive online class. We call it a smock. And I actually did this with my colleague, Sam Gosling. He and I had been teaching a traditional large introductory psychology class. And we taught, taught two back-to-back -back classes of 500 each. And I've always enjoyed teaching these large lecture classes, but he and I are both into gizmos and technology. And starting several years ago, we started exploring the idea, what if we turn this into an online class? But if we did it, we had to make it smart. And by smart, it couldn't be one of these classes where there's a, a camera in the back of a large lecture hall, and all you saw was some little guy walking around back and forth talking. We wanted to make this compelling. So what we started to play with was using the idea of, of modern television, late night television programs, where you would have people at a desk and the camera would be close on our, the teacher's faces and we would talk with each other, we would talk with the audience and the audience being students, but also make it so it was compelling that students were involved so that we could break the class into small groups so that we could push a button and people would be in small groups of five or six or seven or sometimes two or sometimes 20 where they talk with each other. Over the past three years, the program has expanded to affect a large number of courses and students. In terms of number of courses of the pure live course, we've done about 18 versions at this point. If you start expanding that to the various iterations, spin-off versions that we've done. It looks like right now in the realm of about 50, but we're ramping up pretty quickly. So right now we project by the end of academic year 2016, 2017, we'll be over 100. The courses are run as live lectures presented to a small group of students in the studio, while the remainder watch at the same time by streaming video. Students participate in real-time discussions moderated by TAs and course designers. The live sessions are not all lecture, however, as the classes also bring in live quizzes and activities. In between classes, students have assignments just as they would with a traditional lecture class. It's a little different than that. So uh, we broadcast our lectures and depending on the version that we're uh, providing, it is a live uh, broadcast, meaning that students attend class by logging in and watching our lectures. Then they also have outside readings and sometimes outside uh, other assignments. I think actually there are a lot of differences between teaching the two classes and I've found that I'm becoming more and more enamored of the online pedagogy um, relative to the in-person pedagogy. So I was a little hesitant at first when they first approached me about possibly teaching online. I'm somebody that really likes to connect with my students. Part of my style um, as an instructor is to really use these sort of relationship building models that I've learned about as a clinical psychologist and try to use that in my work with my students to encourage motivation, to encourage attendance, you know, all of those things. And so I was really, really concerned that actually sort of the magic of my style wouldn't translate into this type of format. And instead, what I found is that that was sort of an old school idea that I had that I think is probably a generational difference, actually, and that the students feel very connected to us, that they find all kinds of ways to get to talk to me and that they don't seem to have much of a barrier um, between the in-person versus the online, that they really like the responsivity of the fact that the way that we're teaching this online course is that they get to actually um, you know, call in, so to speak, right? They're not using voice, right? They're using typing, but they actually have a feed where they can send us questions while we're in lecture. And so to me, this makes it so much more interactive than the sort of old school internet classes that we used to have. A common refrain we have heard from faculty and other universities teaching asynchronous online courses, especially those with an adaptive courseware component, is that their role changes. In contrast, the smocks at UT Austin appear to keep faculty in the same role. I think it's changed their role, but it's done so 
in such an organic way with them at the center of it that I think they're a little less aware of it. It doesn't feel as different to them because I think they're still very much in the driver's seat and they feel like they're still leading the experience. It's just there's so much more scaffolding and there's so many more possibilities that are opened up to them with the support that they get. I don't really feel like my role as a faculty member has changed a lot. I feel like it's expanded a little bit, like I'm able to reach more people with the same type of relationship. No, it's very similar to uh, a large lecture class. You deliver the material. What we did, because technology allows us to, is we pause for questions, and then they, in real time, type out questions that we then address during the lecture. Just like you would, you know, if anybody have any questions, people raise their hand and they ask. And in fact, you get a, a lot more questions because it's anonymous and they're not sitting in a group of 400 students and, and, and are embarrassed, right? Clearly, in, in the live course, we have an immediacy of interaction with the students that we sometimes lacked with the, the asynchronous courses. Timing is always a challenge in an asynchronous course because you are uh, interrupting uh, self-paced work with live events, and you have to kind of reach a critical mass of the students performing that work to make sure that you're capturing everyone and, and not mystifying. In the live course, it seems like everyone's on that same pace, and so we... We get the immediate interaction, um, both uh, in, the, in the lecture mode, but also in, say, the chat rooms. UT Austin is paving their own trail in the journey to transform large lecture classes into interactive versions that use technology to create small group dynamics and keep students engaged. In future episodes, we'll explore the pedagogical design of these courses in more depth, as well as the underlying technology. We'll also ask the question of whether these efforts are leading to improved student outcomes, and in particular, whether the SMOCs can reduce the achievement gap of first-generation students.